Does that sound familiar? As you may know, the serenity prayer is a prayer used in AA that encourages people to accept what they can't change, have the courage to change what they can, and have the wisdom to know the difference between the two. And I might add to that, when we do that, we're using our power in a healthy way. So this whole theme this month in the Centers for Spiritual Living has been power to the people. (laughs) And today I'm going to talk about our personal power. So last week I talked about how power begins within and that with clean power or God power as our superpower, as we connect to that spirit and soul within, we're supporting the life that we want to experience. And then noticing what beliefs and fears we have around the word power. Does it make us coil? So some supportive questions to ask ourselves include, can power be safe? And how and where can I use my personal power for good? How does my expression of power relate to my values? Remember gold nuggets today. So the journey toward clean personal power is always going on within us. How power shows up in out pictures in our life reveals how our inner work is going. How are you doing? Are you doing the inner work? Yeah, sometimes. We don't want to just do it when things show up that are uncomfortable. It's daily, moment by moment. I know we drill that into you, but that's the truth. When asked what to pray for, Ernest Holmes, our founder, answered by saying, we can pray for anything that brings more life and harms no one. And this approach works with our use of personal power as well. What brings us more life and harms no one? I stand in my power as a presence for good. Let's say that together. I stand in my power as a presence for good. Again, I stand in my power as a presence for good. That's all. Goodbye. (laughs) so science of mind recognizes our place of power in creation as part of who we are as individualized expressions of the divine you each are individual expressions of the divine you know that turn to your neighbor and say you're an individual expression of the divine you're an individual expression That lets you stand in your power as an expression of truth. So the practical application of our power is to bring more life. This does not mean that we ignore or bypasses the challenges of our life. No, and I know some of you are going through some hard times. It means we stand in our power from a place of a high watch and allow our unity with God to determine how we express power rather than feeling separated, hurt, or seeking control. We reclaim our power in a healthy way. I stand in my power as a presence for good. good. (sighs) Have you ever been indecisive or overwhelmed? (laughs) Is it too easy to just shrug your shoulders and say, I just can't make up my mind? Have you ever felt that way? Well, that's a difficult confession to make when you practice a faith and philosophy such as the science of mind that speaks to the power and wisdom we all have. That's not indecisive. We can all feel overwhelmed, short of inspiration or new ideas at times, yes, So I put a little reminder timer on during the day in my head to remember, oh yeah, I have a superpower available to me. I just forgot for a moment. 
because that power is the infinite wisdom of the universe. <laughs> I mean, the key to harness this power is to actually surrender first to the idea that you don't have to know everything. Oh. See a lot of nodding heads. <laughs> I don't know about you, but boy, I always thought I had to know everything and do everything. Because too often we fall into the trap of thinking we must, of our own accord, know and do everything. I can do it. But it's not more knowledge we need, it's more surrender. Ah, that's the S word. Like last week I did the F word. If you weren't here, you missed it. Forgiveness. But the S word is surrender, which is scary to a lot of people. But when you surrender to a power greater than you are, you give up having to do it by yourself. I mean, give yourself a break. <sighs> Call on your personal power within. I stand in my power as a presence for good. I stand in my power. You know, in scriptures, we read how Jesus declared that of his own self, he could do nothing and that it was the father within that did the healing work. So when we surrender the need to know and do, when we feel the pressure of life closing in, and I know it's difficult, yet it's an essential one that we open up to a greater power. Put it on the altar. Remember Pixie again, Reverend Pixie. Give it, up, give it up to the divine. I have a little can on my desk. It's called the God can. We made them one time here a long time ago. It's a little empty can. And when I get frustrated and can't do something, I feel like I'm just at the end of my rope, I write on a little piece of paper, I stick it in the God can. Because God can. I can't. God can. It's a God can. Maybe that's what we'll do next month on the third Sunday. We'll make God cans. All right. Remind me, Joy. <laughs> so when we call on that power, the infinite wisdom of the universe is available to us right then. Right then. Right then. I mean, think about it. The power that fueled Countless inventions, paradigm shifts, and groundbreaking insights is waiting for you to call upon it. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for me. 1-800-G-O-D. <laughs> you know, in the, I just thought of, remember the Batman uh, show? And they had a little phone that went directly to Gotham City or something. I mean, it was like direct line to the main guy. You have a direct line to the main guy, <laughs> or main thing, not guy. You know what I'm talking about. Ernest Holmes says that it's an act of faith to call on this power with a calm expectancy and confidence that it will respond. It has to because it's the yeah. law. law. <laughs> I fought the law and the Law one. So this month in the Science of Mind magazine, Power to the People, there's a, there are great dailies that uh, are Ernest Holmes first and then uh, Reverend Dr. Jesse Jennings' comments. And Dr. Jesse Jennings is, a, is an amazing religious scientist, scholar. I've taken classes with him just right on. So I just want to read a little bit about this. It relates to this thing of power. To believe in God, this is Ernest Holmes, to believe in God effectively means much more than simply asserting that you believe in a power greater than yourself. The presence of God to you must be an inner experience, a spiritual conviction that is real. You hear that? You must know that God or the divine, whatever word you want to use, is right where you are and not separate from you. Oh, breathe that. It's right where you are 
right where I am. Every time your heart beats, he says, it is responding to an infinite rhythm that no one ever fathomed. Every time you think, you are thinking creatively because your mind is one with the creative spirit. Out of the mind of God, you were created as a divine being, each of you. And as a divine being, you must recognize and know the source of all of that which created you out of itself, the creative spirit of God Almighty. It's not just us in this room. Everyone has that. Everyone is a divine being. So Jesse Jennings says, acknowledging there's a power greater than anyone's personal life, personal will is vital to effective living. It affirms humility, balance, and a healthy proportioned ego. We have to have an ego, but our ego doesn't have to take over and be the head honcho. It's pretty obvious that a whole lot's going on in the cosmos that no one of us had any part in creating. Like, how does your heart beat in rhythm? Or how the colors paint an evening sky? Right? And here's the wonderful paradox, he says. While the human personality cannot restrict the fullness of the divine's nature, that nature expresses fully and simultaneously through each of us. Recognizing a higher power is a good start. That's a good start. There's a higher power. Then we move to the realization that we are one of one mind with that power. So it's not just there's a greater power, but you are one mind with that power. Do you see that? It's just that next little step up on that high watch. We think and feel into its creative process, manifesting conditions and experiences in return. I stand in my power as a presence for good. Because, you know, within each of us is the light of life. And are we willing to reveal that perfect nature in our life, to be empowered within? Are we willing to step aside from the small, petty thinking things, turn away from discord, upset, and place love first, place God first in our experience? You have a choice, always. I was thinking, you know, what if everything I did, said, or thought today was from a spiritual viewpoint of the divine in everything? Hmm. I just heard that from everyone. Hmm. What if I practiced deep gratitude for everything that showed up today? What if? Ernest Holmes said, the point of control is always within. Hear that. The point of control is always within, and the wise one starts to assume dominion over their disorganized thinking. Ha! This is so much easier to accomplish when we realize and remember that the spirit within us is urging us in that direction. That's why we always want to keep coming back, come back, come back. You know, a few years ago, I, I did a book study uh, in my ministerial studies a few years ago, a while back, <laughs> um, called Super Brain by Deepak Chopra. Great book, highly recommended. And he tells us that when we do anything, when if eat breakfast, go for a walk, think about the universe, draw a picture, your mind can only be in one of three states. Unconscious, aware, or self-aware. Only one. When unconscious, your mind is passively receiving the constant stream of input from the outside world with no creativity. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? 
Oh, that's unconscious. When you are aware, you pay attention to this stream of input. You begin to select and sort and decide the process and so on. And you make choices about whether to accept or reject. So that's being aware. Then when you are self-aware, you loop back on what you're doing. You pay attention and you notice. And you ask questions. How's this working for me? Is this how I want to feel? Is this who I want to be? You become curious. So we exist in all three states, and which one predominates at any given moment is up to us. So ideally, we want to reduce our unconscious moments, right? While increasing our awareness and our self-awareness. Would you agree? Remember last week, ABC. You remember what it was? Awareness builds consciousness. Good. ABC. Awareness builds consciousness. I'm angry is an aware thought. While flying off the handle is unconscious. It's good to be aware, but self-awareness is even better. I'm angry gets you only so far if your aim is to control the anger. Knowing, being self-aware of where your anger is coming from adds a component of self-awareness and allows you to see your pattern, the pattern in your behavior. Maybe the anger is coming from something way back and you were just triggered. So once you bring self-awareness in, shift happens. Shift happens. Did you know that? Shift happens. <laughs> I've seen it as a bumper sticker. Shift happens. You start to take control and reclaim your power and the power to change your reaction. So you can create freedom from any discord or discomfort by making a conscious use of the law and being self-aware. Ernest Holmes gave us a powerful tool to help with self-awareness. One of them is spiritual mind treatment and visioning, which I'm doing later today. Spiritual mind treatment is our five-step affirmative prayer. So when we have a difficult situation or circumstance in our life, it's simply a disconnect to our true nature, our inner power, our clean power of the divine. It's like the plug came out of the wall. Oh, I'm not unconscious. I'm, a, I'm aware that I am off track, so I'm going to plug back in. I'm going to plug back into my superpower. You know how, isn't it weird when something happens on your computer, the first thing the geek says is, did you unplug and replug it back in? <laughs> Usually that fixes the problem. Reboot. So reboot to the divine. Reboot to God. So we use our imagination, our thoughts, to free us from any discord, to be empowered, use our power, but it takes awareness and practice, 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 right? So last week we worked with those twines, the pieces of twine, you remember, those of you that were here, and you tied them together. Well, Dr. Joe Dispenza, brilliant uh, person, man, uh, neuroscientist, says this, as you marry, thought that was interesting, the thought of your intentional future with elevated emotions like joy, love, or gratitude, those thoughts and feelings change and transcend your usual or baseline state of being. Once you enter that new state of being, as you begin to mentally rehearse the different choices you'll make, the new experiences that await you, you're changing your brain to look like the experience has already happened. That's what visualization is, or creating a mental equivalent. Right? We've talked about mental equivalents before. When you do this, you're actually installing new neurological hardware. Woohoo! 
which is, your, which is moving your brain's neurocircuitry from being a record of past experiences, being unconscious, to becoming a map to future experiences. In other words, you're priming your brain for a new future. That sounds like spiritual mind treatment and visioning to me, and visualization. Visualization and visioning are actually two different things, but they both are powerful. Creating a new experience. Would you like a new experience in your life? I know you would. <laughs> me too. And the universe is always responsive to our requests because it's the law. law. So you're planting a seed. Be careful what you plant. Personal power is always available. And again, we must notice, am I unconscious in this, what I'm saying, what I'm doing? Am I, am I aware or am I self-aware? Moment by moment, just be notice, noticing that. Where's my attention? The great teacher Jesus taught, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. What's the truth with the capital T? It's understanding that we're one with the creative mind, and as we recognize and unify with it, we are released from the bondage of false thinking, and we reclaim our power. What if there was nothing to fight? What if there was nothing to heal? or fix, only more God and love to realize. Because in truth, that's all you need to do, is to claim that, and the other will disappear. I stand in my power, or I am willing to stand in my power, as a presence for good. I stand in my power as a presence for good. Yes, there will always be rocks in the road, and they can be stumbling blocks or stepping stones, depending on how you use them. What do you choose? I invite you to find the spiritual practices that support you in reclaiming your power, in replugging into your clean superpower. Take a breath, and I invite you to close your eyes for a moment, and just relax. Relax into this moment. Relax into that part of you that is already illuminated, that is connected to the one, has always been connected. Somewhere, somewhere within you, you know that. Relax into your expansion. Relax into the freedom that is ever available for you. Relax into the truth. Relax into who you are as a child of the Most High. Relax into your soul. Relax into God. Let's take that into prayer. Join me heart to heart mind to mind, soul to soul, as we simply remember and recognize the magnificence of the one, one energy, one heart, one vibration, one source of all, omniscient, all-powerful, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, everywhere present and all-knowing. 
And this energy is moving in and through me as me, and it is absolutely moving in and through each of you. We stand in our power as a presence for good today. We stand in our power as a light for any darkness in our own lives or any darkness in the world. We stand in our power for good. And so I'm grateful today that we are willing to shine our light, maybe a little bit or maybe a lot, that we let go of what doesn't serve anymore and we focus on the good, the greater, the truth of who we truly are. And so I'm grateful today to know that something has shifted in in your consciousness, that there's an opening in your heart to the idea of something better. And so I just simply thank you for being here. Thank you for opening. Thank you for being who you are, the magnificent one that you are. And so I release my word into the law, knowing that something is shifting, something is opening. We're planting really good seeds today. And we allow them to bloom. And we just let it be. And join me in affirming. And so it is.